Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM connection standalone. RAM connection standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this particular video, we are going to be focusing on the workflow for assigning a base plate connection to a column base joint within RAM connection standalone. We will now turn our attention to our RAM connection standalone application, where as you can see, we have several joints that have already been created in this particular model. For this particular video, we're gonna be focusing on joint number eight, which is a typical column base configuration. Here, our goal is to assign a base plate to this joint. To start this process, Go to the Design tab in your Ribbon Toolbar and then click on the Assign icon. Now all column base joints are considered, are considered combined connections if they don't have any type of gusset being attached to them. As you can see, we have several different base plates available based on what types of forces your column base is experiencing. These would include pinned base plates, fixed base plates, both uniaxial and biaxial bending. For this particular example, we're going to go ahead and select the smart fixed biaxial base plate and then click the assign button. After the connection is complete, let's go ahead and click the close button. Now in the joint selection area, I should be able to see the status of this connection design. What I'm noticing right away is that my interaction ratio is greater than 1.0, and this information is in red, indicating that this is currently failing the code check. So let's go ahead and proceed to the connection pad to review and modify this base plate detail. To do that, we'll go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the edit icon. All base plates are considered combined connections. Now within the connection pad, I do find it easier to sometimes do a little rotation on the main view window. And to do that, you could just hold down your right mouse button. In addition to that, the first thing I typically like to do is take a look at the results whenever I have any errors or warnings, which will give me a better idea of which parameters would affect the changes to make a passing connection design. Now here for the base plate, I could see that flexural yielding is currently overstressed, giving an interaction ratio that's controlling the design of 1.24. I will go ahead and scroll on down and see if there's any additional information. And here I could see that anchor tension also seems to be an issue. Once I'm done reviewing the report, let's go ahead and click close and take a look at some of the parameters that we can modify. I'm gonna scroll on down in the connection pad until I get to the connector information and here I'll be able to see that I can select a variety of different type of parameters that can go ahead and affect the results. For this particular exercise, I'm gonna try increasing the size of my base plate first. So I'm gonna go for the longitudinal dimension of 24 and I'm gonna go by 24. Okay, that did bring my interaction ratio down a bit, but I'm still overstressed. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to increase the number of anchor bolts. So I'm going to find the anchor information and I can see that I can go ahead and adjust the rows per side or the anchors per row. I can also create a customized anchor layout where in that example I would go ahead and give coordinates referencing the center of the base plate to each anchor location. I'm gonna try the longitudinal position and I'm gonna just increase the anchors per row to three. 
Now once I made this change, I can see that my base plate design is now passing. Here I have an interaction ratio less than 1.0. It is in green, meaning that it did pass all code check requirements. Now in addition to those parameters that I went ahead and modified, I can modify some of the support information. I can modify any of the anchor information or also anchor reinforcement. If I'd like to change some of the parameters, but not all, I do have a chance to also ask RAM Connection Standalone to re-optimize the base plate, and I can select which parameters to optimize. If I wanna go with this type of workflow, I would select which parameters to optimize, which parameters that I wanna set the values for, and then I can click the Optimize button, and it'll read that information and attempt a new connection design. At this point, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at the DXF view of this connection. I can see how this would appear in a DXF format and I can export this DXF. Now I did make changes to this connection design. So I'll go ahead and click on the save icon before closing out of the connection pad. I should now be able to see the new connection that was assigned to this joint and the new design status in the joint selection area. At this point, this concludes our process for designing a column base plate as a combined connection in RAM Connection Standalone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.